everyone's doing well this morning. I have some exciting news. Baby sister was born this morning. <laughs> um, her name is Bristol. Mom and baby are doing fine. Um, I'm filling in for Lisa today, and so I'm just now looking at this. Please forgive me. Um, there are lots of things going on this week. Um, please just take a look at your bulletin, and believe it or not, Bible School ice cream is this Sunday. So if you can let Kathy Blaylock know if you can make an ice cream freezer. Um, we do need a little extra ice cream this year, as we're having a group of square dancers come so we need to feed them right so um, please consider um, making some ice cream and also if you have a child uh, in particular that you still haven't signed up for Bible school it's not too late please do so we're trying to get our um, all our supplies and that kind of thing name tags made and and that kind of thing so we will love to see everyone at Bible school there's also a school supply drive that's on the back of your bulletin. I think there's a spaghetti dinner at the Grange Thursday. Just all kinds of things going on. So I um, hope everyone has a great week, and we'll give it over to Pastor George. Good morning. Good morning. We, uh, we will lift up prayers today for our country. After what happened yesterday at the campaign rally, uh, it's, it's so sad that uh, things like that happen, but we, all we can do is to, to pray for our country and, uh, and the individuals that were injured uh, and the family of the individual that died. So, uh, so we ask we ask that you lift up your prayers for our country uh, during times like that. We also uh, I want to share uh, a couple thank you notes. <clears throat> Since our phone uh, system is still out of order, uh, Mary Ruth and Jack Owens uh, didn't get the message uh, to us in time to get it in the bulletin. So she had a, a grand daughter to bring her to church on uh, on Thursday after uh, after the bulletin was printed and handed me a thank you note and she said she wanted to thank all the children and youth and the advisors for the beautiful singing last Sunday uh, and the treat bags and they were all uh, so beautiful and so she said thank you and come again and also, we'll have uh, another thank you note in the bulletin. It arrived in the mail uh, late this week from Carolyn Howe. So uh, the, uh, the Christmas in July uh, last Sunday made an impact on uh, folks in our congregation. So thank you so much. Also, uh, wanted to announce that uh, uh, Geraldine Wood is having hip replacement surgery this week. Uh, on Wednesday, so keep Geraldine in your prayers and keep a number of folks in your prayers, all the folks on our prayer list, especially uh, Philip uh, Duncan, Philip Carricker, uh, Stephen Ellsworth, uh, Eddie Ritchie, all the folks that have been going through health issues in, in their life. Lift them up in your prayers. Uh, I, I sometimes will just pull out the bulletin and take the prayer list and name off all those folks as, as we pray for God to strengthen them and heal them and, and uh, lift them up and give, give them strength. Also, I want to announce, I just got word that uh, uh, Todd Holzhauser's uh, other grandmother died last night. Uh, her name was Effie, and I'm not sure how... Her last name is pronounced Valines or Valines. I'm not sure, but she, she passed last night. So Todd and his family uh, haven't even had the funeral service 
for his other grandmother, Rose, uh, and that's coming up on, I think, uh, August the 11th at St. Peter's in Salisbury, but now they're planning uh, his other grandmother's service. So, and keep not, not only Todd, but also uh, Grace and Gabe losing two great, great grandmothers in 12 days. That, that's, that's hard, so, so lift them up in your prayers each and every day, and uh, we, uh, we give thanks to God for God's presence today as we lift up our worship to God and to uh, help us in our lives together. Let's uh, begin our worship with our prelude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Richly inspire us, O Lord, to consider and accomplish what you see is good. For we know that we cannot live without you but that with you we shall prevail. And so we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite the young folks to come down for a brief time together.
Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsively Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out you have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again as your people have rejoiced in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is seeking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Here ends the reading of the psalm. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven 
and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Did my uh, microphone go out on me? I can't tell. Okay. Evidently, evidently it's working. All right. King Herod heard of Jesus' works. For Jesus' name had become known. He said, or some said, John the Baptist has, raised, has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others said, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for anything or whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked him, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oath and his guest, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I guess you're wondering, what's he going to say about that? <laughs> well, it's definitely a horror story. When uh, 
You know, we think of horror stories, but then on the lighter side, we think of fairy tales and happily ever after. And that does play a significant role in shaping us and our experiences of life. We are inundated from birth by themes and images of the way life should be or the way life should play out by the storylines provided us sometimes in fictional accounts, in books, in films, in everything from Disney movies to Hollywood blockbusters to popular television and online series that we watch. We love keeping up with the lifestyles of the rich and famous, so to speak. Their activities, maybe their weddings, their vacations, the births, the highlights, and the lives of the celebrities. Not to mention when we start thinking about the royal families. You know, we're enchanted by tales of the underdog and the anti heroes who get their happily ever after stories. And somewhere in all of this, we formulate a vision for what our own lives should look like. But we have to be honest. Real life rarely resembles fairy tales. And there's never any guarantee of happily ever after. The Bible isn't a book of fairy tales. And the story in this sixth chapter of St. Mark is all about a royal family that no one envies. King Herod's second wife, Herodias is portrayed as conniving and vengeful, filled with hatred and the desire for revenge. <coughs> Why all that happened, the scriptures tell us that John had proclaimed to Herod that that marriage to Herodias was not right. It should not have happened. And so that set up that hardness of heart between Herodias and John the Baptist. And you know the scriptures say Herod kind of looked up to John. He liked what John had to say except the part where he condemned Herod for marrying his brother Philip's wife. You know, this story, as I said, reads more like a horror story than a fairy tale. And when we read about the presentation of John's head on that platter at her request, we see King Herod as he truly is. Someone that thinks more about what people think of him than someone that goes against the word that he had said, I'll give you up to half of my kingdom, whatever you want. Backing up a little bit, actually... That party that we're having, Herod was giving it because it was not some special gift to the nobleman or the military. It was his birthday. He gave himself a party for his birthday. And so, so you see from the very beginning, 
Things are not shaping up to be a good ending. John the Baptist himself, his life seems tragic, doesn't it? But we have to think about John. From the very first, when John, when we hear about John, is when he's leaping in his mother's womb, Elizabeth his mom, when Mary comes to visit, she had conceived Jesus. And when she came in, the babe in Elizabeth's womb leaped for joy. John and Jesus were cousins. John went to the desert to lead a kind of unusual life, wearing camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist, you know, animal skins, and he, he was a rugged individual. But when he came out of the desert, John actually proclaimed a baptism of repentance out in the desert, around the River Jordan, and people came. He preached repentance and people came and were baptized. And then, as Jesus came by, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And Jesus walks into the water and John baptized Jesus. Even though John said, You should be baptizing me. Not me baptizing you. And John said, and Jesus said, let it be according to the word. Up to that point, John was paving the way for Jesus. John was the one that Jesus said, among women, this man is greater than anyone else who's been born. So all of this, it shows us that John was a significant person in the life of those scriptures. John prepared the way for the coming of the Lord. John's life was not tragic, even though he stood up for what was right. He was imprisoned by Herod. John lived that challenging life. But you know, as humans, we cling so strongly to images that we think life should be and what life should look like. We still expect happily ever after, and fairy tale endings, and are often perplexed when our lives hand us something different. And we are, in fact, so committed to fairy tale endings and to projected images of success and happiness that many of us intentionally project images of our lives to other people that are not only highly edited, but sometimes completely false. Have you heard about a paid service that is available? It's called fake vacation. You send your picture and snapshots of your family to a company. And they will edit the photos into fake but fabulous vacation spots so the client can share the images on social media. It may sound pretty extreme, and it probably is extreme, but it's not too far off from the way our lives are edited on social media and the outside world to fit 
our happy narratives. And we've likely all seen similar images and the storylines that we read about. We may even have, you know, participated in some of that before. We know in intellectually that why, what is projected doesn't tell the whole story. And yet research shows that spending time on social media sometimes will cause an increase in depression in people because we will compare our lives to what we are seeing portrayed publicly and then end up feeling that our lives doesn't do not measure up so life doesn't have to be less than a fairy tale to disappoint us if our life is not going the way we expect it to or hope that it would or even if it has veered far from the way that we would imagine it, you know, we're not alone. Maybe we've been sidelined with an injury or illness or a death, a loss, a broken relationship, or maybe something distressing has happened to maybe our children or someone that we love. We may be filled with a sense of disillusionment, anger, grief, heartache, sorrow, or confusion. Or we may wonder, why is this happening to me? What went wrong? We may even despair of life itself. You know, there are people that can teach us a different way to approach life. People whose lives look nothing like a fairy tale. For example, John in today's scripture is a perfect example. John the Baptist is just one example among many in the Bible. Many saints, many faithful offers us a different script in our life. Alternatives to the lives prescribed by Hollywood or Disney or social media or even our cultural traditions. This script is God's script. And it follows God's purpose and calling on our lives instead. So as people of faith who follow Jesus, this is exactly where our deepest hopes and dreams are to be rooted. In what St. Paul describes in that second reading for today as the glorious grace that God freely bestowed on us. So scripture reminds us that no matter what twists and what turns that we face in life, no matter what trials or disappointments that we suffer, they do not compare to the inheritance that God has for us. Paul writes, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, we are blessed. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, and we are marked with the cross of Christ, and we are sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. The pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's people. John prepared the way for Jesus to come 
and live his life on this earth to preach, to teach, to heal, and to forgive as he went to the cross to die for us. You know, when our lives find their meaning, meaning and purpose, uh, we don't find them in human storylines, but in God's storylines. The God who called John the Baptist and all the prophets, like Amos in the first reading, the saints, and each of us to a life of faith, then we can start to see our lives very differently and to adjust to new expectations. We can throw away all the scripts and the storylines that someone handed to us or that we embraced in our lives and realize that our lives find their deepest meaning and purpose in something that is much, much bigger and greater than ourselves and our individual storylines. As we root ourselves more deeply in God and God's Word, we begin to see that our lives have the potential to impact other people with the love of God in a much deeper way than we ever imagined. John the Baptist's life was one, what we could say, it ended very tragically. Yet, this is not how we normally think of John. I mentioned all the things that he was doing in his life to prepare the way for Jesus. We remember him that he was a hero of the faith who paved the way for Jesus to help bring salvation and the good news of God to countless generations after him and whose witness still inspires us Today, like all the saints, we have been blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We've been called and redeemed by God, and we've been given God's glorious grace to live lives full of meaning and purpose that is filled and supported by none other than our Creator, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. There's a quote that I ran across that said, Few of us will live fairy tale lives, but we have a choice about how we will ultimately define our lives when we follow God's storyline and the grace and joy and purpose that it brings. And I think that quote makes us lift up our hearts and know that God is with us, helping us through everything that comes in our lives to give us strength and hope and comfort in the midst of things we don't have control of. I think when we think of Herod and we think of John the Baptist, Herod thought so much of his, I guess you might say, he didn't want to back down. He didn't want to stand up with integrity and say, this man does not deserve to die. He caved in and had John beheaded. Jesus went to the cross to die for us, to forgive our sins, 
That's God's storyline for us. And so we live our lives and we say thanks be to God for sending Jesus to die for us so that we can live our lives to the best of our abilities and ask God to help us through all that is to come. And it's in his name. We say amen. Amen. We will stand as we sing our next hymn. Let us proclaim our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of life, you have breathed into us your creative, joyful spirit. You have lifted us from the dust into the swirling joy of your presence. We are so grateful for all that you have done for us. Each day, remind us in many ways of your mercy and your love. Yet there are times in our lives when we have felt lost and alone. We've been hurt and frightened and wondered where you were. Remind us again of your loving presence. Place your hands of healing on our lives. Comfort us when we become afraid, lost, lonely, and fearful. Prepare us to serve you faithfully all our days as we have lifted up the name of our loved ones to you. We ask that you be with them, comfort and strengthen them. We pray for those of our congregation on a daily basis. Continue to lift them up and we pray for family and friends. Lord, as we think of people that we need to call upon to receive strength, we think of Todd Holzhauser and his family and the death of his grandmothers. Be with his whole family. Give them strength. We thank you for being with us in times of joy. But we also come to you and ask your presence with us. As we pray for our country. Lord we ask that you help us through the evil times that we see. Help us to call upon you to give us strength during those times in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be with us now in this time and this place, and in all the places and times of our lives. We ask that you be with our youth as they come home from their mission trip today. We ask that you keep them safe in their travel home. Lord, we ask that you help us as we complete our preparations for our vacation Bible school, which begins next Sunday. And Lord, continue to be with our call committee as they prepare for a new pastor's prospective visit in August. Lord, we call upon you to be with all those that we pray on a daily basis. We pray for Geraldine Wood and her surgery this coming week. Continue to be with those healing from tests, from surgeries. Continue to be with Philip Duncan and Philip Carricker. Stephen Ellsworth, Eddie Ritchie. Lord, we call upon you to be with us when we pray to lift up family and friends. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your love and your grace that strengthens us each and every day. Lord, all these things we pray into your hands. We commend all for whom we pray and trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our last hymn. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.